Hi guys, welcome back to the Drive Life channel. And today's video is a follow-up um, following a previous video that I made talking about why you shouldn't buy a P3 Volvo. Now, that video I think was misconstrued by a lot of people. Um, a lot of people thought that I was complaining about the car. But really what I was trying to do is just give an idea of the pros or the, sort of the cons of owning a car like this to put off the people who would potentially be moaning about the car. Um, so for those of you who thought I was moaning, um, I wasn't. I was just sort of using it to give people um, a realistic expectation of what this car may be like to own. So in order to appease the people that um, I'm perhaps offended, I'm going to do a video on what every reason sort of why I love this car, um, just to prove to you guys that there are more than uh, why you shouldn't buy the car. Anyway, so um, let's get into it. The first thing is the looks. Now, the P3 generation Volvos often get overlooked um, in terms of the styling. I think given the cars that were available at the time, they were quite um, reserved in the styling, but actually, when you take a closer look, they are a fantastic looking car. Now, obviously, this is the S80, but the V70 is fairly similar. Um, at the front, it's, everything is just sort of nicely done. Uh, it's not too shouty, but actually, when you come around to the side, you, just, you see you've got quite an aggressive nose here. Um, the headlights are set back, and in the bonnet, you've got quite a few sort of sculpted lines. There's, there's a nice sort of curve that runs all the way down the side of the car here. Um, and then for me, my favourite thing about this S80 is this sort of rear three quarters here. The way it sort of sweeps down, the angle, it's just a nice a nice thing, isn't it? Um, it's, a, it's a thing that's not seen on many cars. A lot of cars are quite um, to a boot, uh, whereas the glass on this is quite extensive down the back and the boot opening is quite small. Um, you do have a slight hit on practicality because of that but um i trade that any day um and along with sort of the out the exterior styling the interior styling is nice as well now you're gonna have to excuse the the chaos that's inside my car at the moment i was just on my way to work uh, so i just thought i'd stop and do a video um but uh yeah you've got this waterfall con center console here um that is actually quite thin that you've got the floating area at the back um, it's just nice this this is the r design um model so you get the metal trims and everything but it's just a nicely styled minimalist yet functional interior um, that i really like and these dials as well uh the way that the they don't have a needle as such it works around the outside it's just a nice touch and that's not it's not something that you saw on cars of this era um it certainly was a very sort of quirky swedish design um, and the design gurus as it were from volvo said that they were trying to create scandinavian luxury and i would definitely agree that they've done that especially if you see the ones with sort of the open pore modern wood um and the cream interiors they do look really really nice and premium um so yeah that is another reason why i love this car it's just sort of the interior space it's just lovely to be in and further to that is the seats now I've said it in many videos before, these are perhaps the most comfortable car seats I've ever sat in. Um, nothing else, newer or older, has ever been as comfortable as this that I've sat in. So definitely um, a car that is perfect for a daily driver like I use it. Um, long journeys, you just get in it, slip the cruise control on, and you actually come out more refreshed than you were when you got in. So um, that's definitely uh, something that I love about the car. Next thing um, is going to be the engine. So obviously this is the D5 twin turbo. It's the originally the 205, um, but with a pole style map and a few other bits. It's about 240 brake. Um, and it is, yeah, it's is sweet as not this engine. Plenty of power, sounds fantastic, five cylinder diesel. And uh, yeah, it's just really, really nice. Doesn't quite sound as much as, as nice as that RS6 there, but um, it's pretty close. And it's unique as well. It does, I've had quite a few people who aren't into cars say that it sounds nice um and for, for car people that can actually be quite a uh quite a compliment um if someone who really isn't into cars comments on actually this car is nice then i think that for me is a big thing um so yeah it is certainly a fantastic sounding car and it pulls um it pulls really really well well over 100 miles an hour with ease uh, and the car feels settled at that speed as well um Mine's mated to the six-speed ASIN box, um, which again, 
I absolutely love. Um, it's really nice and smooth, very quick when you want it to be. Uh, kick down is good as well. And I find myself actually um, with the accelerator almost playing the gearbox um, as shifting the gearbox with my foot. So depending on how far I put it down, depends how much it drops down um, or kicks down even. And yeah, it's just nice. And it's simple as well. You don't have any sort of sports modes or anything like that. It's from an era where they designed gearboxes to be good. Um, rather than having specific modes to hide its downfall in particular areas so um yeah definitely a really really great package with the d5 and the automatic asim box there now I've, I've lost count of how many this is but i love the boot space in this car it is it is cavernous um let's not forget this is made oh that's that's a fail isn't it the boot's locked Let's not forget that this is obviously based on the same chassis as the V70. And as such, you get V70 style rear um, boot length anyway. Um, obviously, you don't get the depth, but um, there you can see the depth of this boot is huge. And it doesn't give you perhaps the uh, most usable space, but for any sort of long journeys, if you're taking the misses away, um, you can fit every bag you'll need. You could take a whole family away in this car, and that's what I love about it. It's that sort of throwback to 60s American big cars where we all jump in as a family and just go. Um, it's, yeah, it's just awesome. Um, what else? Yes, going back to the uh, sort of long road trips and everything and the comfort, this car's range is also fantastic. Now, if I was to sit on a motorway, um, at around sort of 65 70 miles an hour I could potentially get a nearly a thousand miles range in this car don't get me wrong it's expensive to fill up at nearly 95 pounds but if you're getting 50 plus mpg on the motorway then you're going to be touching that thousand thousand mile range mark and that is awesome you don't get that on cars nowadays um, they're all about reducing the weight so they put smaller tanks in um and it's just a bit of a shame especially with hybrids and everything the weight and everything you just can't seem to find a car that has a cruising range long enough to get you to the south of spain nowadays from the uk um and actually that's what i love about these older um executive saloons is they were designed for covering massive distances without having to um stop i mean i saw an advert from uh the I think it's a B5 Passat, the B4 Passat, the older one. Um, and the advert was specifically saying that you can drive 1,400 kilometres without having to stop. And at the time, that was a selling feature. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just cool, isn't it, to be able to drive. I mean, I fill this up probably once or twice a month, and I'm doing 200 miles a month, 200 miles a week. Um, so, yeah, it it just lasts. Um, and that's that's sort of an ethos that runs all the way through the car is that it's built to last everything every sort of panel is absolutely solid um that is yeah there's there's very little flex in the panels um compared to bmws that obviously we own and have owned um i find that the panels on the bmws are just a little bit more flimsy there's less there's they're more fussy in their design whereas this is a nice simple design um and also the 17 inch alloys a lot of people have asked me if I'm going to upgrade them and everything like that. Now this was, um, I think there was, a, there was a standard option for 16s as well on the Zard design. This is the base wheel um, at 17 and I'm not going to change them anytime soon. They're just right in my opinion. Um, I'm a fan of sort of thicker tyres anyway with uh, these Herefordshire roads, potholes everywhere. Um, and this car soaks them up really nicely with the suspension. Um, you just can't complain. It's a nice, comfortable ride. And that's what this car is about. It's not about having sporty handling where the, a larger sidewall um, compromises the handling ability of the car. This car is about getting places far away comfortably. Um, and at the end of the day, that's what we all do in our cars. Well, people like me do anyway. Um, we like to travel long distances in comfort and it not have to be an issue um to go somewhere uh, and that's the biggest thing for me about these cars is the freedom it gives you um so yeah that's that's sort of uh, my 
not quite an apology video uh, compared to the last one but proof to you guys that i do love this car and that i wasn't just hating on it for a reason although that, that video did very well uh, we had nearly 3,000 views in the first 48 hours um so uh thank you to everyone that watched that um apologies if i upset you at all um the sat is not going anywhere at all it is an absolute dream car to own so um yeah thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you next video cheers